What's up guys, uh, Kyle with CLM Systems here. Uh, we've got another video jet 6420 107mm printer. We're gonna take a look at it, see what's going on. Um, the customer did leave the ribbon on for us to see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off and kinda hopefully get a peek at how it was printing. And actually, I'm gonna bring this up to the camera. It doesn't look half bad. So the last time it was printing, it wasn't doing a bad job. So that might not be the reason why it was in here. Maybe something has changed since then. Um, so I have done like I always do. Remove my side plates. Uh, that way we can see how the cassette works. I've got it set up already, so we're going to power this unit on. So I just went through the calibration process. Everything looks great. I did apply air and I can hear a humming coming from the solenoid. So I suspect there's an issue there. It's pretty loud too. Let me, I'm going to take the air off and see if that's still audible. Yep. All right. So that's one thing we'll have to change. All right. So I can still hear the audible uh, solenoid issue. We're going to go ahead and throw some film underneath there, get a test print, see how the print looks. Um, also, we're going to be testing that solenoid, right? So when we tell it to print, it should open up and allow that air to flow through it. Not good. Um, the ribbon's all wound up. It's a little bit better. We've got a giant blank spot in the middle, and I suspect that's from the ribbon being wound up. You can see what I'm talking about there. So, um, I may have found the culprit already. Oh no, I want to test it some more. Let me take this to the side. Don't know if you can see this, but this belt, or this, I keep calling it a belt, this printhead cable is sticking out. As I assemble, it's causing the ribbon to actually be pushed this way. Oh, printhead carriage position here. I suspected. Another printhead carriage position here. So we were able to go one time, but now we keep getting printhead carriage position here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna power this down. Um, we're going to take the cassette off. We're going to move the printhead carriage assembly away from the homing block and we're going to power it up. And what we're going to look for is to see how that pin enters our homing block. Okay. All right, so we got our carriage moved away from the block. Now we're going to see what happens when we when we cycle our power. Uh, as it starts up, this printhead carriage is going to want to return to its home position. Um, and when it goes into its home position, which is this little black um, homing block, we'll see if there's an issue with the pivot assembly getting in there. It is a little loose. Assembly. Our springs are intact. All right, so it went in, no problem. So we're gonna put this cassette back on there, give it another shot um, at calibration, see what happens. All right, so the ribbon is bunching up again as it's I can see a, print, a printhead cable is in the way. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this view, but this is the ribbon. It should be over here. So the ribbon has moved about, I would
would say almost an inch. So it's wound up an inch on one side because it belts. It's wound up an inch on one side. <laughs> it's wound up an inch on one side because the printhead cable has moved. So it came down and just got stuck. So I'm running through some print tests just to see if I can't get that print head carriage position air to come back. I'm curious to see where that came from. And what the root cause of that one was. Um, generally, you'll see it in the calibration process if it has an issue getting into the homing block and that's not what happened. So we've opened it up twice now and it has successfully calibrated and gone home. You know what? I bet you it's the linear slide. All right. So, take this off. Give you a peek. Uh, so what I had done was I attributed this little bit of slot that I felt that I wasn't too concerned with um, to the timing belt. But I think it's a little bit more than that. So you can see it's just getting stuck. Well, the belt is super loose, but it feels actually like it's the linear slide. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart. We'll put a new linear slide on here. We'll put a new timing belt on there. We need a new solenoid as well. Um, the print head's okay, but we just need to fix this print head cable. Um, it's not in a good position right now. We're going to do all that, put it back together, and test it. All right, so to get at that linear slide, unfortunately, um, we're going to have to remove the almost everything off this unit. So I started with the print head, took it off. Um, now we need to remove the rear housing and the circuit board, so we're going to take all the screws on the top off, except for the motor screws. Uh, the one I'm working on right now, that's a circuit board. Another circuit board. Alright, so those are all boards. We've got missing one here, got this one, this is a rear panel hidden by the belt clamp. Take this. That's to the side. We're going to grab our three millimeter Allen key and work on the circuit board. We're going to remove it from the back here. Uh, there are three screws attached to the board, three through holes. Okay. Cool. All right, so we start unplugging stuff. circuit board out of the way. Um, all right, so the next step is to remove these four screws. Now, once we take these off, uh, this print head carriage, we'll call it a plate, is going to come off, but it's still going to be connected um, to the hose, our airline hose. So we'll be, have to flip this around, get a flathead screwdriver in there, and pop that off. Uh, to get these four flathead screws off, you need an M4 Allen key. Wow. All right, so there I need to get to my flathead so I can get this airline out of the way. 
Uh, this is a pain in the butt when you put it back together because you got to put it back together just like this. You use one hand to feed the air line through this little gap, and then you have another hand holding your flathead screwdriver just to try to screw them in place. All right, this guy is captured. Got a cable. Get that out of the way. Cool. All right, now this is loose. So what I'm gonna do? Move the belt out of the way, and we should feel now there's nothing except for that linear bearing. And you can see right away that's where the issue is. You still see the grinding, there's nothing else hitting. So, we'll take this off, uh, take these three screws, two and a half millimeter Allen key, pop him off. All right, we got our pivot assembly off. Move this out of the way. Uh, just gonna check the spring on there. Spring feels great. So I know that this is not our issue. Yep. All right, so there are four screws holding this printhead carriage block in place. We're gonna take these four out. We're gonna put them to the side. feel that I guarantee there's no ball so the way this I actually used to work for this company and the way this works is there's a um, there's a groove in what they call the rail and then there's uh, a mating side on the linear um, guideway or block and it recirculates through these end caps and I guarantee you one side probably has no recirculating balls and that's why we're feeling the grinding So to take this rail or guideway off, um, it's a two and a half millimeter Allen key. Got seven screws in here. Take this all the way off until we get a new slide. So what we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and go back in there and replace that. Um, also, we have our printhead carriage block out. Now, I'm gonna flip this over. We got flathead here and here flathead screws. Um, <clears throat> you can use a flathead screwdriver to remove these. Just loosen them up. You just want to back them up a couple threads. We're going to slide this belt out of here and we're going to put a new belt in there uh, so that this whole movement assembly is good to go. All right, so we're going to do that. Put it all back together. Um, in the process, before we get everything, we'll get the carriage back on after we put our slide on there. And before we put our carriage back on there, we want to make sure these little printhead springs are also attached. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put new ones on. These are still probably salvageable, but we're going to get rid of them. Just put new ones on. It's always best. Again, philosophy, I don't want this coming back. Um, and I wanted to show you the tool we use. It's kind of got a hook to it. And this is what we use to... Let's see if I can get it. We use this to grab the spring and hook it on to the pivot assembly. All right guys, we've got everything put back together. Um, essentially we did those steps in reverse, put it all back together. Uh, new slide, new timing belt. I did spend a little bit of time and fix those cables because if you remember, we lost about an inch of ribbon um, as it was calibrating. So we'll see if that happens again. Um, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. I'm gonna move this all the way over. And we're going to see how this thing goes into the home position. Like a glove, guys. That went in like butter. Um, now time to add our cassette to the mix. Um, we did not change our solenoid yet. Uh, so I'm expecting to hear some grinding. Uh, that little audible noise that we heard wasn't really a grinding. More like a humming.
Okay, so uh, a slight wrinkle, but nothing compared to what we were doing. So this is much, much more improved. Um, I'm just taking a peek below to see what is actually sticking out. And it's the, it's the white belt. Um, so the flat ribbon cable, um, not the blue cable on these four inch printers. Um, applying air pressure now, I don't hear that audible noise. Um, so I'm gonna be paying attention for it. It didn't happen right away last time. It did, um, the second time it happened after the first print. So we'll see what happens after this first test print. Sounds great and looks great. All right, guys, all we needed there was a timing belt and a linear slide. That's it, fixed our problems. It was all motion related problems, whether we were getting a, a carriage position error, which we got one time, and the bad prints, which we got the other times. Um, part of those bad prints was related to the ribbon. I mean, the, yeah, the ribbon and the print head cables, but there was a very loud Boom, I'll call it, uh, after the first prints before we fix these belts and slides. That'll wrap up today's video. Need any help? Uh, CLMSYS.com. Reach out. Kyle. Thanks, guys.